Hello there and welcome. My name is Martin Close and this is the Classical Art Academy Online Art School. Welcome everybody. Hope you can all hear me okay. And uh, this evening's stream, <coughs> pardon me, out of water is going to be how to develop this a little bit more than we uh, have already done. So what I want to do is to really work on this tree line here and also here, maybe moving into this path so we can get the top end, see how far we get, but it'd be nice to get the top end nearly to completion. So slurp of water and we'll get straight in. Now, <clears throat> I've already given the sky a second coat layer of paint um, and I've cut into the tree line a bit around this area and also around here. I just felt it was too straight edged. So when on, in hindsight looking at that I thought no, we need to change that. So we've done so. I've pre-mixed some colours and I just realized I've run out of white, so we'll get that straight on. Now the way I tend to put white or colors onto a palette is I don't put a blob on. I'll literally put a, a line of color down. And the reason for that is I can always take fresh color. So if you have a, a dollop like this, it's easy to contaminate. Whereas here, it gets contaminated up here, but I need some fresh color. I can just lift off from anywhere down that line. So we pre mix some colors. So what I have on the palette so far is titanium white. There was some, uh, cad no, there was, there was a nickel, grief, um, Naples <laughs> yellow light there, which I've used. Um, I'd put some back, see how we go. Uh, this is cadmium orange, cadmium red light, and here we have uh, ultramarine blue. There's um, olive green, Van Dyke brown, and ivory black. And the premix colors, you can see, this is pretty much the ambient color going into um, an orangey glow, which is that kind of sort of misty fog which I wanted to uh, apply. And this color will be used in the early stages of these tree lines. So let's, uh, let's make a start. Now, um, I'm using a number four ivory filbert um, from Rosemary & Co. And you can see these, this line of trees here. Let's, let's work down here a little bit, I think. So it's probably just noticeable. And that's kind of exactly what we want. So we put that in a little bit. It's just showing on screen. And a bit more into here. This is more like to, more or less to, to introduce the tree line, nothing else. Make sure we don't go too low. Bring that up a little bit. Yeah, I think that's okay. Getting pushing that over. large part of this painting is, is kind of experimental because although I have a guide which is just down here, see the top end of the photograph, it's a uh, guide of it. It's a photograph of the uh, of something which I took in Yorkshire several years ago. But I don't want it to be the uh, the exact painting that I want to paint. Let's come in a bit more on that. Put 
pushing this color down so that I can blend into it with softened edges and develop the tree line as I go down. Okay, so a quick look from before. Yeah. We're mindful as we go higher, because it's lighter up here, these trees are going to become a little bit more defined. You can already see that on canvas. The colour's exactly the same, but the lighter background colour is bringing it forward. Maybe just tone that down a tad, see. So I don't want it to be too much too soon. This is um, more of the ambient light. It's too much too soon. It's not going to get the depth of um, distance that I'm looking for. Move that down. That's better. Doesn't need to be smooth, but the texture wouldn't hurt that. Okay, so I, as we bring this up, very mindful, I don't want to go straight up in a line, so, which is what happened last time. Hope all of you can hear me. Okay. Please do send message. We've got, uh, yep, Rachel is online, as I say. And I think the sound and everything is, and picture is okay, so we should be good. Okay, moving into this. This is going to be a little bit nearer, so I don't mind maybe that coming into more of a stronger colour. But I can put this in in a minute. Get this line in place. Happier with that. Now, as before, I want to bring this down so that it's um, wet, not thick with paint. But I don't want it dry. Okay, that's good to go. Now let's do the other side. screen to make sure I get a, a whole view. Uh, now this is this is definitely nearer than that so um, I don't think I mind going to a uh, stronger color so let's look at pushing this in. Notice I'm dipping into the um, deeper, deeper orange. 
it's like a burnt orange. It's a mix of titanium white, um, cadmium yellow, sorry, cadmium orange, and um, a grey, a neutral grey, which I've pre-mixed. Which you can actually see down here in this part of the palette. So we've got a, like a, that's probably a 20% grey, 35 or something like that percent, and about probably a 55 or, or so percent grey, 60% grey on the end. Um, and it's the, uh, the, uh, the reason I like greys on the palette is that it helps me desaturate a colour very, very quickly. If I feel it's too much, I can reduce the chroma down. But more the tree-esque shape. Yep. In the jar I've got a mix of oil and uh, odorless solvent. About 75% oil, 25% odour odorless solvent. Yeah. <clears throat> Had to think then. Maths is never a strong point. Okay, so bring that down. Connect it up. Yeah, it's better. So now we're into the tree line. Bring that down a little bit more. Now I could use a tiny bit of solvent on this. I'll say medium, but I, I don't want to make the paint too runny. I'd rather, it, I'd rather it had a sticky bond than a runny one. So too much solvent makes it too thin, too runny, not nice. Okay, so those are just basic shapes of trees. Now, using this um, deeper mix, I'm going to come back into the base area. Complicate that up a little bit. I don't want to overpaint what's already on there. I want to create some variant shapes. So <clears throat> it's like these trees are just a little bit nearer than those. I'm going to be painting um, some of the greens back on here. I like some of these shapes, so I don't want to destroy those, but there wasn't much uh, shape on that to uh, worry too much about. Kind of felt I needed a bit more orange glow. Like I said, it's very much a process of experimenting a little bit. And I'm kind of putting the deeper, richer colour in, just in patches. I don't want to put a uniform 
load of color on. A little bit up here. I've been very mindful because I don't want to go too much into this layer that we've already applied. So I want that to be pushed further back and not brought forward. So these are very much additional trees rather than those around the background area which we've already put in. Didn't do a great deal of work to this painting last week. We got a bit busy doing other stuff. Which is a shame because that was my plan. That's probably got a little bit too much on that. It's just adding a bit of lighter colour. Same brush, but no worries. Okay. Yeah, all right. This is um, in prep, really, of what we're going to be doing in a second. Let's come around this one a second. Okay, now I'm going to break that there. I think it's good enough to go. Tiny bit more around here. And then we'll start adding a few other colours. I'm going to add just a tiny amount of the fluid. I certainly don't want to go too runny. Okay. Good to go. Right. Um, now, moving into what was the first of our greens last week, which was this colour. Now, these colours, by the way, have lasted well because I've had them in this... If you can see that little, come around here, you can, little contraption. Um, it's a plastic box with a lid, which you can get from the internet, I would suspect. Um, it's about 1,200 wide and 1,200 deep. So about a foot by a foot, if you're an Imperial. The lid goes on like that. That's somehow, here we go, the lid goes on. And that gets put into the freezer or fridge. Um, it's lid on, so it's not going to contaminate. And underneath or inside are your paints, which you can see there. And they stay fresh. Not for one week, not for two weeks. In this particular case, I think it's three or four weeks. Um, and if they're in the freezer, they'll stay fresh for a long time. So a little tip there, go and get yourself one of those and your paints will keep. So when you mix the colour, Three weeks later, you still got the colour and you don't have to worry about remixing it. Or more importantly, you don't have to worry about wasting paint, which uh, you've already spent time mixing. So let's see what this looks like. Should be slight effect of a green. You know, just see that. So you should probably just see that as well. And I'm going to dance around this just lightly. The orange is going to cut in and affect the colour as well. That's the plan. So we end up with a pattern effect. Pattern effect? Might not be the right terminology, but patchy maybe effect. Don't want this blended. And 
this really probably represents at this distance the shadow colors or the shadow of the uh, trees. So you've got to think of the lights here, where the shadow is going to be. And um, nothing else. Just lightly go over some of that. Now I mentioned to you, I kind of like some of this effect which we had last week. So I want to be putting some of that into this painting. This is the very much the beginning part or the first initial stages of you seeing something which goes from the atmospheric into a subject color. Like a subject here is trees. So the subject color trees mainly going to be green. Could be any color, but uh, I'll say green. And this is just on the edge. It's um, it's not right on front of you. It's a long way away, and you won't even know what it is. The only reason they're going to know what it is at this distance is that there's other trees around it, telling you, ah, oh, they're trees. A little bit of a dance around. It's kind of a very much a um, almost going to say a nothing color, in the sense that it it's only going to really show with the other colors around it, because it's so affected by the other colors which we've already put in. It's going to show up as um, almost the same, but not quite. A complication within the colour. Here we go. We're slightly complicating it. Now, let's put a little bit of that on the top here around there. Let's just get this end. Try and think of a early morning mist or a late evening mist. I'm more inclined to say early morning. Okay. And with that in place, Let's go down to this next green, which looking like we're going to need a little bit more of in a minute. Which I'm going to go high, just going to mix these two greens together. I think that will make a difference. So this I kind of like. So I'm going to make that wet again as a shape of a tree coming down. Do that again. A little bit here. Like I said, it's all a bit experimental. It's quite exciting, really. I kind of like the feeling of not being in control all the time of the kind of a discovery of. I have something in my mind which I want to achieve on this and therefore we need to I need to work it out. If it's a question of simply following um, a photograph exact then well you know you can see it, you know what colour it is, you know where, where to stick it, but something like this, a little bit more creative and I like that. 
what I set out to do on this one initially anyway, was to create something which wasn't as the photograph. It's very, very distant, so it's not going to have huge amount of, um, well, any detail, in actual fact. It's just ever so slightly darker as it comes in. This is going to be dark. That's going to be a bit of light coming in there for some particular reason. No idea what it is. It's obviously, it's a side of something and it's caught the light. Kind of like that. A little bit more light. Here's nice. Same. It's something which is caught the light. Now at this distance I'm going to add a little bit of the orange or burnt orange onto that. I think it would just push it back a little. Again, a bit green and mix that colour in. No detail. It's just a um, oops, base of colour. Slight drink. Good. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> so we add a bit more now. I'm going to chase the light. In other words, I'm looking at where the light is and I want to make it um, fresh paint. So I'm going to put some wet in there, some wet paint in there. Two things, the reason for that is mainly it's going to give me a softened edge or softer edge. If this is, which it is, bone dry, but put a bit of paint on it, it's a sharp edge. We don't want sharp edges um, at this stage because I'm too far away. So it needs to. The edges need to be um, slightly out of focus. There we go. Now there's another light here, good. And this area is going to be really close, but this is going to be closer, but not as close as that. So just putting in some of these lights is going to be it's worthwhile doing slowly. I can always fast or add to something a little later. Right, a bit more in here. And these are just uh, the edges of trees, bushes, shapes, lights, darks, whatever, um, that I'm, mainly lights obviously at this point, that I'm seeing. Okay, now here we are, we need to go slightly richer, and I'm, I like that brush to remain a little bit further back in chroma, so I'm going to go with a fresh brush. Again, this is number four, Rosemary & Co. Long Filbert, I think. Um, yes, long filbert. And I think I'm going to add some more colour out. Let's have a look at this. This is, no it's not, it's the wrong one. Uh, but I'm, where are you? There you are. Cavity and yellow deep. Good, eh? Favourite colour for doing trees and forests and all sorts of things. And to that, we're going to, um, it's a bit of blue, but we've got black here now. I think I did this last week. A bit of black and some of the cadmium yellow deep, and you mix those together and you really get a nice green. There you go, look at that. You see that on the palette? I think so. And that green is, uh, I just put a load of black in there, so you don't mind. Let's just move that around a bit. Okay, so that's given quite a dark green. 
what I'm going to say to you is that this, um, when you add the yellow, which we're just about to add more, here we go, um, it will make a nice highlighty green, very yellow green, um, but quite a nice leafy in the sunshine esque green, a warm green, put it that way. Okay, I'm going to stick that in. I'm going to be fairly selective where I put it because a tiny bit of fluid. It's fairly happy. That's your fact. So a quick peep of that from afar. Uh, I'd like to see it a little lighter. So I'm going to go and add some this light ambient colour. This is one of the uh, ambient lights which we had. A tiny bit more fluid. I don't like mixing on the brush, but hey, I'm mixing on the brush. So it will excuse that one. Um, yeah, a little bit more of the yellow onto that. And actually about a tiny bit of orange. Another colour I'm looking for. I think that's about it. So we'll pop that in a few places. Yeah. Very different to stuff going on down here, but it, it's now going to bleed into that. So I'm going to push that in a few areas. more of the orange. Mix as I go. When you put your brush into the medium, don't wiggle in it. In other words, like a watercolour artist would wiggle in their dip or water. Don't wiggle. Just dip. If you, um, if we went, you know, tingle, tingle, tingle and wiggled the brush into the uh, medium, all of the pigment from the brush would go in the medium and you'll end up with a, in this case, a green medium. You wouldn't want that. So it's not, uh, don't do that. Okay. Tip of the night. Don't wiggle in your dip. Okay. So I'm using this colour now to bend into introduce a bit more as we push back. Yeah. The orange warms up the green. And link adds to this kind of ambient effect. Now let's just get a little bit more orange into this and I'll just do it at one side and you'll see what I mean. A bit more of that yellow, orange, green. Okay. So I'm going to put something, this is a bit of light which actually I just realised is um, dry. So let's get a bit of this in. It's going to be darker than that side, but not that dark. Most importantly, it needs to be wet. Good. 
That's far too big for what I want it for, but that's okay because I'm going to cut into it. That's fine. Now, come into this. And I'm kind of going to make this up, I think, with a view of what I've got down on the photograph. We'll see. I'm going to put the big colours and shapes in first. Come back and have a look at that. Predominantly, it's, um, it's actually quite a dark area, this area here, this part. And this is just a break in the trees where there's some light coming through. So let's just have a quick peep at that. No detail as yet, just literally popping in some light and dark shapes. We'll come into this one. It's a bit drier. I think I'm going to put some, um, yeah, it's just a location or something that you wanted to put mark off where it, where it was. And generally speaking, just going to dapple, for want of a better word, that in. If you get a soft brush, let's get a tissue on it. It's a daisy. Bigger than I anticipated. Have you arrived? Um, I just want to mess that up a bit so that it's kind of a, out of focus. Out of focus is a really good way of explaining this in actual fact because I want it to be there but I don't want it to be necessarily seen. It's um, other stuff's going to go on it so it's, it's the backdrop to what's uh, going to go on. What it needs to do is to believable, be believable as something like patchy light. We can stick uh, extra light in there. Um, same as if you're painting lace. You don't paint the threads, you paint the holes. So I'll be putting some holes in that to show it as uh, light coming through the trees. Right, get back into the other colours. Have a quick look. Yeah, I'm very keen to put some dark in. So this is a chisel brush which I'm going to be using now, only because I've run out of filberts, but no other reason. And it needs to be. It, it's like dry leaves down here. This is a path. This is some dry leaves down here. So we need, when we're putting dark in, we need to be mindful of that. Um, now, I've got Van Dyke Brown on the pile here. And it's a very dark brown, yellow brown. If I add, this is cadmium yellow, sorry, cadmium red light. If I add a bit of that to it. I think I'm going to get the um, 
leaves colour. They're in shadows, so a bit of um, bit of the orange and a bit more of that red. Sometimes you need to punch a colour, and the cadmium red light is a very uh, it's very orangey red, very strong red. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with that actually. Initially, it'll be good. Good to go, as they say. I might not have enough colour on there, but never mind. Good excuse to mix some more. Let's see how far we get. I'm going to use a little bit of solvent, uh, sorry, um, oil into this, which is that medium I was telling you about. And I'm going to stick some patches in of this. Yeah, I'm happy with that for the nail. So, okay, so a little patch comes off down there. This is just telling me where um, some of these warmer areas are. Nothing more. It's, it's almost like I'm just sticking in some support color. Just need to know kind of ish where they are so I, I can map this in. Nothing really is probably going to be seen of this. But I just wanted to put those in. Look at this fictitious path coming across here. Tiny bit of oil. A bit more red. Van Dyke. It's almost on fire. Van Dyke will just tone that down. Van Dyke's, it's, it's, I almost put um, raw umber out instead of Van Dyke brown. Very similar um, in many ways for doing this chose the Van Dyke because it's darker and probably the only reason actually I almost tossed a coin on it was just well, I've got to use one or the other so I, uh, that was first in my hand it's almost gone brown so I'm gonna go a little bit of the orange and red just Push the uh, push that in. This is only really, like I said, it's it's uh, it's for me to see where those values are. No more, no more than that. A bit more of this. I'm gonna put that down here. Let's just get a bit more of that. Orange and red, and a little bit of oil. Okay. I'm happy to go with that, I think, for the time being. I don't want to spend too long on that. Um, Okay. Right, let's put that down. Actually, I'll use the same brush. So I'm going to stick in some darks now and put this area in dark. You'll notice I've got one hand which is covered with a glove. Um, inside is a uh, cotton liner. And the reason for it is um, I don't like getting paint on my skin. Uh, because the pigments we're using are quite strong, so it doesn't come off very well, uh, especially under the nails. I don't tend to um, nowadays use a glove on this hand 
because I don't tend to get the paint dripping off my elbow. You can see it's kind of contained at the brush end. But when you are wiping a brush or putting something, it's very easy to get paint on this hand. So that's why I've got a glove on one and not both. So let's look at getting some darks in. Um, now, we'll use the uh, Van Dyke. And I want to use um, some of this green into the Van Dyke. Bit of oil. So Van Dyke Brown's a yellow brown. It doesn't take much for it to push over. It's a little bit light. I'm going to actually go with some black onto that. Again, don't mix with your brush. So, let's see where we are. Darks. Well, they're definitely going to be around here. Um, because this is a... Not only a dark area, but it's near. Yep. Okay, a bit of oil on that. This is actually quite an extreme dark, so I'm going to be a bit mindful of where I stick this. important to have some darks but I'll make sure they're in the right places you notice I'm, I'm kind of scrubbing this in I'm not putting a thick dollop on and the reason for that is I want to be complicating it with other colours and if there's a big thick dollop of paint there that's going to make that complicating process a little tricky. Okay, let's uh, get rid of that. Yeah, I'm happy to go dark around here. I'm not happy to go to this, this dark down there. So I need to be mindful. Pretty soon I want to be heading into lighter zones. Question in my head which has come across, which I think it's going to be okay. I'm going to push the dark out so it exits that. Ooh, that was a bit light. I'm not sure about the chroma on that one, but never mind. Um, I don't want this to be too happy of colour, so I don't want to go too bright riotous green on that. I've just added a bit of red to value that down. Uh, and I'm going to add some black into this. Black will clearly make things darker, but it also takes the chroma away for whatever colour it's added to. Yeah. That would be frightened of using black, by the way. Da Vinci used to use black, Rembrandt used black, lots of people used black. It's okay. Now, this colour, which is a bit of a, is that green I added? Um, I want to add a little bit of red to it. Now watch what happens when I add red to this colour. It takes the intensity of the green down. 
to yellow red, which means it increases its yellow content as well. So it goes less of use as a chroma and it pushes in a bit of yellow. Yeah, that's kind of, I think, just what that wanted. I think I said this last week, I need a bigger brush. It's not speed painting though, so it's all good. Yeah, that, that's beginning, we've got dark and beginning to come out into the light. Um, I'm happy, he thinks, a bit more fluid. And this is olive green, I'm going to add to it. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm a bit mindful of going, I don't want a green painting, but I, I'm mindful it's got to be green in places, so boom, that's a good place for the green to go. I'm going to add a little bit more red to that. Yeah, it's just added a kind of orangey glow. Took some of the green away. Bit more olive. It's like a string of colours. So you've got green on one side, black on the other, and lots of stuff in the middle. Okay, so I'm a bit more of that, a bit more of the orange. It's kind of I want it to be green. Just don't want it to be too green. I'm deliberately making it patchy. I don't want to, yeah, don't make that a complete one color job because it would be look absolutely pointless. Right. Getting into this zone. A bit more of that. A bit more of these uh, olive and some orange. Now the only thing that's problem on this one now is probably a little bit too much oil. So I'm going to let that go for a bit. Too wet, too oily, not enough pigment. Makes things harder. <coughs> Pardon me. So can you see that? Just beginning to edge out. Get that more of this on. Yeah, good to go. And now we're away from that area and back into this bit of the painting. Ooh, okay, so we've got a light bit there. So again, using the same brush, I'm not proud. Um, I want to, a bit of orange in that. Yeah, that's okay. It was just a light area. Didn't want to make dark. That's better. Let's have a quick look at the time. Phone's off. Good. Ah, oh, great. 
So that's a good time. A bit more of the green, a bit more of the orange. Just want to keep that green orange esque. Um, warm. Kind of when it when it gets a bit further on, you'll you'll see what I I'm trying to. I think hopefully anyway achieve. Don't want it to be a rich riotous green is the objective here. Yep. So a bit of orange again going into that ivory. Olive, sorry. <laughs> Olive green. Ivory green. That's an interesting one. Right. Get these shapes in and they'll begin to look a bit like a tree. So we've got light going into the dark. And I'm just now chasing that back. You can see that little bit of tree-esque shapes, which we'll build on. Not following anything in particular. I'm just going for what feels right. I know there are trees in that area, so it's pretty much what I'm looking for. See what happens if it, if it doesn't work. If it doesn't, you know, work nice, work well, or look nice, well, change it. I don't have any sense of value for this painting. It's going to be what it's going to be, but it's going to be what I want it to be, hopefully. So I'll make it into that. So this is some things I do I, I don't like so much. I'll change some things I do, which I like a lot. I'll keep. But I don't, I don't consider it my precious. So at the end of the day, it, it'll be what it'll be. The, you know, the gods are in there somewhere and kind of have faith and they know what they're doing. So who knows what it's going to come out like. But it's I, I like the, the way it's being developed now much more than I was, I think, in hindsight. Last week it was just a bit too green and too, you know, uh, contrived for my liking. Um, what's that word I'm looking for? Made up. I don't know. It's not the right word. I'll think of something in a minute. It wasn't messy enough. It was too organised, too... that sort of thing. Right. So here I'm just playing with shape. Dark. I mean, yeah, I've got a bit of light on the brush, but it's predominantly dark in that area, so it's going to be dark. And I'm just shoving it round. Maybe you get me heard that way. Yeah, I like that. It's We're going to stick stuff in here. Not yet. Now, oh, that's a bit dark. One thing I, I hope you guys take from this is I'm not, I'm not that like you know this careful yet. I'm just putting big shapes around, and some of the shapes I put in last week, yeah, I, I like them, but generally. Um, Something stuck in my head, which I just needed to shift around the place. And so I don't, you probably gathered by what I'm saying is I don't, what I mean is that I don't have a precious feeling about this is 
and it's it's not right in my head so why should I feel precious about it and and even if I did if I find myself feeling precious about a painting it's going to stop me painting it so it's like a negative I don't want to do that um, and also if it's really precious well then I'm not going to want to sell it so it's really the whole precious thing with paintings it's something which you need to not try not to have difficult easy to say difficult when you're, you're learning because you do a nice painting you think oh it's lovely oh, stick it out on the wall um, but you know as you do more and more and more and more and more you realize well yeah they're not that precious not yet so you're okay just tickling this and this is where we see there was a dollop of light which we put in and um, it's been valued down now and it's it's fine it's going to get in there I just want to work in this area now that's kind of high chroma for me for that zone so I'm going to take this whatever that was which was a ready brownie mix and shove it into the green pile for a second it's too too much too soon too dark so a bit of gray now these grays this is where it comes into our own because that color is kind of okay but it's just a bit too woof in your face um, it's too intense so these grays pick one I don't know this one maybe um, and just add it to that color and it doesn't change the hue it just changes the saturation the chroma of the color and that's kind of nice so it's made it lighter okay so um, do I like that or not I don't know so a quick think on it oh, decision time let's put it in over here Ah, uh, ish. It's it's getting ish the right way. It's just a little bit too. I think it's a bit more green. It's too warm in hue. A new hue once, and I'm going to add a lighter grey to it because I just think it's a little bit too dark. Bit more hue see the tiny bit of gray is just well that's just destroyed color hmm okay stick it in and around I think it's uh something don't talk too good when I'm painting Probably don't talk, don't paint too good when I'm talking. Let's get in here. Look at. Please do um, type a message if you want to ask a question. Very welcome to do so. Um, makes me feel all important if I've got to answer one of your questions. <laughs> so don't uh, don't worry just do type in a something if you want to ask yeah okay that's getting I thought that color was a bit not slightly dodged for first but it's not, not as, as bad as I thought it would be can change it anyway if I wanted to so here it's really on that edge of too far back to really worry about and I'm just gonna take as I've got a bit of color which kind of works in this area and complicate that out
Right. That colour there just doesn't quite look right. See what it looks like in a minute or two. So I'm just taking those and just pushing across. I think it's a bit too neutral. So a bit of olive into that. Yeah, maybe. See, I'm quite relaxed and don't worry too much if it's not the right colour. It'll be the right colour eventually, so what should I worry now? Um, this is still the uh, interesting stage of getting the feel of the painting right. I think it's coming. I do also really believe that art, painting, takes us to a place which it's like we're talking to some part of ourself as a conversation going on. And I really enjoy that conversation. So Sometimes you need to let go and just let it happen without trying to make it happen. And the results sometimes are much better than if you force it. Ouch. It's going to take a Bit of water. Yeah, I'm beginning to like this much more than I, I was liking it um, after I sat down and had a good long look at what we did last week. Just kind of maybe I forced it. It, it didn't just what's that word evolve. Cheers. So, I like things to be, I like to be connected with the canvas and the only way I can do that is to relax, let it happen, be a part of the process um, of discovery on this one. There you go, it's a bit romantic for you, isn't it? But I think that's really truth. I don't like to, see, I'm much happier with that now than... I was even a few minutes ago. Oh, this does appear a bit. Um, well, it can be dark. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to follow any rules. Right, so making sure it's wet more than anything. Don't want any. Nothing was. Sort of, you think it's all wet, and there's a dry dollop in the middle. It's just. Uh, like this, for example, which I've just discovered now. Okay, so that, um, I'm going to be mindful I don't go too dark. It's, uh, I'm going to add a bit of that grey to it, the green, and I think this green. So it's... Uh, just a little tad on the blue side. So therefore we add a little bit of the orange. This is going to make it orange, isn't it? It's a tad too much orange. <laughs> oh dear, never mind. Yeah, that's better. As soon as I put that on, I thought, no, mm, it's a... Tad to blue. Okay, now I 
I'm just gonna kind of add a bit of tree-esque shape to that against the other color so that they kind of stand out as a shape within themselves, a tree-esque shape. Whatever happens, if I ever make any sense in whatever I'm talking about, I have no idea, but I kind of know what I mean. Now, let's have a quick look down here. This, um, it's light. This says uh, scratching his head. So, um, I'll bring that around and complicate that up. So, okay, we got a bit of this stuff going on. It's a bit light esque. Yeah, I'm happy with that. It was just a bit too, ooh, hello, in your face. Now, a um, bit of the green, tad red onto that, and a bit of orange making it ready, orangey green. Um, <laughs> Rachel was telling me earlier that we're almost um, full for the, I think it's in September we've got a, don't quote me on the date, um, but if we have another colour theory um, class, a uh, little one day workshop uh, coming up and uh, it's only just been put out and it's, I think it's almost full. Maybe we'll have some ready orangey greens in that. <laughs> that that one at uh, with the Martinese dictionary. Okay, that's good. Yeah, so I I don't you see I've got no idea what that is and I don't need to know. It's fine. It's it looks like a disappearing tree line going following this which is a river around there somewhere so and I don't need to know don't need to know um yet what that is going to be so that's all good it'll come in the briefing it'll come it'll come as we go now oh hello okay so a bit of green making it dark all right Darker, darker still, a bit of brown. So I'm kind of moving around this colour. Looking out to the photo, I'm going to go a little bit darker on that now. So a bit of... So when I say little, I mean that's a little. Okay. And that I'll introduce to this. So, yeah, I'm a bit happy about that, I think. Here was dark. Let's see where we are with that. To just bring that over in a kind of patchy way. Light space. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take the light camera off. This is why I wear a glove. Look at it here. So you can see I'm now squeezing the paint out. Wouldn't want to do that with um, out of glove. Right, now I'm going to work into this dark. So we've got a bit of black, bit of green, bit of brown. Blacky browny green. And just without any, because it's already a little bit wet. So we don't need any mix, solvent, 
uh, oil or anything like that on it. Okay, let's just come back and have a look at that. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I think that's kind of good to go. I'm going to... I think it just can be a little bit of light in that area. So we'll choose the light brush. Olive. Yellow. It's not direct, but it could be because of this light, I suppose. It's blue. A little bit of orange, but a yellow. Some quick look. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm guilty of making. I'm making that up, but I think I'm going to create a bit of light relief. <laughs> light relief. Oh uh, all right, good. Now get back into the dark. It's a little bit wet around there, as I think I mentioned earlier. Must pay more attention in class, that's going to come down. So look at that. Yeah, that's uh, good. He likes that. Complicating that shape a little. Don't want it to look like a straight edge. I'll do my head in. dark so I'm actually going to push black now black is going to go onto that and whatever that is it's going to make it black Kerr. so if it's green it's going to make a blacker green but it's going to fundamentally go darker and it's a blue green this is so um, sorry blue green blue black ivory black so any yellow in there is going to make it go green-esque anyway but I really want to push the dark into this end of the uh, story of this painting. Right. Just looking at the screen, yeah, it's good to go. There's, um, I don't know if you can see on screen, there's quite a bit of different forms going on in here, which is okay. It's wet, it's gonna stay wet till easy tomorrow for me to twiggle it. Um, and I'm happy. 
in doing that, so not a problem. Um, now, let's move over here. Yeah. All right. Okay, so same as before. Let's look at these brushes. So we've got a bit of this. Now this is further back, so the this bank is nearer in this area than this. So we need to be um, a little bit mindful of that. So this green. See if you can see this. Yep, you can. Okay, so I'm kind of just. You can see my arm. Same as before. I'm just. I'm going to put down some complications, really. Nothing more. Maybe now you can understand, having seen that side and how that looks, why we did this. Got a pattern forming there, so. Right. The stage which you won't be able to see, um, unless I record it, I might actually record it, <clears throat> is uh, tomorrow when this paint is just kind of beginning to turn. I'll probably just spend a bit of time just taking away some of these um, harder edges, breaking them up a bit more complicated. You'll see that in the next stage of it. The reason I'm going to do that is it's uh, it, it just it's time consuming. It's one of those things where you, you just got to soften the edge a bit just to take it out of focus. Um, but not all over. And sometimes it's adding a bit of the background color in and just yeah just this brush that brush so you have a maybe you'll have this color and that color mixed in and you just wiggle around the place and other times it's just a bit more forced than that but I don't like that so much but if you um do it it's what you, you know, just it's not easy you need it just a little bit um Well, tacky, maybe, for want of a better word. Right, so uh, these now, you can see that's beginning to get a little bit more green-esque. And I think this is going to be good to go. Up here. Um, just taking that into nothing on that highlight. The paint is mixing in with the uh, orange-esque paint, which we stuck on about an hour ago. And that's exactly what we wanted it to do. Okay. So a quick look at that from afar. 
Yep. Yeah, that begins to work well. We can see these distant tree-esque things going on and it just goes on and on as we come around. Right, so. Pushing that round. I'd like to get to, what's the time? Let's have a quick look. Yeah, I'd like to get to the point where we can start adding a bit more. Let me just get this in and we'll start adding a bit more um, data. But I'd like to actually make sure we got this the way I want it to be. So let's just push this home. So we're into the lighter greens now in that area. Rub that in. Here, a bit of light. Go some stronger colours in a second. Tiny bit. A bit of a highlight there, so we'll keep that. So as we come nearer, the chroma of the colours get higher. Gentle stages, nothing too big and bold. About to go into darker zones. You can see how effective that becomes. It just builds and builds. Don't want to go too powerful down here. Notice the brush strokes kind of flicking up and then just taking those edges out. And already they're beginning to look a lot like trees. Bring that down. Bit of more colour. We go into this. Whee, that was a lot of colour. Okay, so let's just take that. Sorry about that. Just, you can see on the palette it's just got a bit of slight whoopsie on that one so let's have a little bit more yellow get that colour back into play yeah that was okay that's better now let's have a quick look at this yeah back in the game so we're thinking stronger as the colours come nearer. Good. And typically speaking, these could well be a, a slightly different colour to those over there anyway, because it's a different bank, although we do want it slightly related. So it might be an idea to put some of these colours that we used over here as well. Slightly more olivey.
quick look at that from afar. Okay. So I'm just going to get the warm brush with a bit more orange glow in there. Bit of a complicate that up a little. That brush down and come back into the green. Still spreading the sort of mid greens. Let me get a bit of this yellow and orange into that mix. Right now we're going to push on up. Did that so. Want that? Ooh, that's black. That's what we don't want. As we add yellow, it'll be fine. There we go. Move black into yellow, but uh, green. Right, pushing that in. So it's a bit nearer. That's what it looks like. Yep. So we continue with that. Now I'm going to push that down. Generally speaking, the dark side of this um, is, is around this area, obviously. So, but it's still patchy. So I want to be putting some lighter greens in. This might be too strong. No, I think that actually is going to be okay. A bit of a light patch coming in. Make that a bit light. Kind of fun complicating this because when you complicate something like this, you don't just complicate with. You don't paint. The leaves or the twigs or something like that. You know, what you do is you complicate the lights and darks and break the big areas up into small areas, uh, with the thought of it being um, like a, uh, a a twig or a leaf or a bush or something. And it's um, but if you had to paint a leaf at a time, oh, that would hurt. So you keep thinking of shape, but they just get smaller and smaller and smaller shapes. Right. almost ready to stick some of these dark areas in, which help define everything.
you get a color that works on the brush then see how other areas you can stick it in The first thing that hits me about that is it just kind of looks a little bit tweedledee, tweedledummy. So let's just complicate that. Out. Like we did before, same thing again. So didn't want that to be out of place. Let's just make a better job of that. I'm going to be able to just join that one up, but shape any of the thing else. Okay. Well, let's not mess with it. We'll mess with it later. Now, let's just get a few darks in. So wacky that in there. And let's shift to the dark brush. Now, again, um, this is going to be a mixture of the Van Dyke brown and ivory black and the residue green, which I've got on here. So I mean, mindful, there's a kind of something going on here. There's a path which is coming across, but generally speaking, this is, I don't want to lose the chroma on that. So I'm going to bung a load of red in, I think. A bit more black. A bit of fluid. Just push this home, so. And let's have a quick peek with a light brush as well, I think. Just making that um, wet. More than anything. Good. Okay, so let's come over here a second. I want to reestablish something. Put it in rough. Then get another chisel brush and I want to re-establish some of the water edge so that's it's going to take on the color that, that is around it but just for now I just want to mark off where it is See about that for a sec. I'm putting that there just so I just don't I don't want to lose its place. And I 
can run it slightly sort of over to the left so I can cut that in a bit. But let's. Take that and move it to the right. And I'll stick this over. This is just literally for location purposes, nothing else. The detailing and the rocks and everything I'll stick in um, much later. I just want to check in with where that's going. Kind of. All right. And with that in mind. Kind of keeps it high, this comes over, goes across here, let's say. Yep. Good. Now, part of me still wants it to come over to the right, so. I think we'll do that. It's just got a bit of oil, tiny bit of fluid. It's probably too much. The location of this got kind of lost, so just want to put that back in. I was thinking it's just a little bit too high. So I think, yeah, just a tad. Never mind. Easy correct. Just get that ambient colour, which is in the background, and we'll cut that off to around about here. Go quite deep on that cut. purpose of this is I just want to get the uh, part of the bank on that side ish in the right place. Not because I want to get the uh, stream in the right place. Yeah, that's turned better. Okay, let's bring that down. Bring that across. So it looks like the path it is going to change slightly, but no matter. This is dark above it, joining in at that sort of point. So, a bit of fluid. And let's get this a bit nearer mapped. Probably should be using a chisel brush to do this, but hey, I just want to rough that in on the bank. Certainly, it won't go too dark. Okay. 
Yeah, okay. And push that across. I don't want to go too. Uh, I don't want it to be too costly on time to put in an exact replica of what we're doing. I want the essence to be there. So just want, I like the the way the stream wound its way through those rocks. So. Green coming down and that is a bank which goes up and that's the purpose of me doing it really. Bit of dark but not too much for that at this stage. Just to show shadow. And similar. This is something I'll, I'll want to do with. Um, a little bit more care because it's getting near ground so I don't want to be just bashing that in uh, willy-nilly as I say so we'll I'll work on that with a smaller brush I just wanted to kind of put in rough position which we've got now oops wrong brush so with that in mind That gives me the location of where those other darks are. And now let's get a bit of this light in and just map that further back. Then brings and pushes backward, going higher, higher, higher. If you lose your place on something like this, it's just a question of uh, finding it again. It's no big deal. And just pushing that in a little bit up. Bank. And actual fact, let's have a quick peep. Yeah. Okay, so that's good. Let's put this dark area in. In fact, I think that's too far over to the right. Sorry about my back. I'm just going to get some fluid on here. Yeah, so. Bit of gentle surgery, as I say. Not really worried about colour. Uh, at this uh, juncture on the game, I just want to get um, shape in light and dark. The rest of it I can play with. That's dark. <clears throat> so, a bit of brownie black. Let's just scrub that in. So, it's just to 
put back in place something which went astray. Made it slightly longer, but then the frame's going to go in, and, and it's. I can easily bash it back, I suppose, but I think it's in the question of my head would be uh, is it worth it? Am I bothered? I don't know. This is. Um, yeah, okay, we'll push it back a tad, but anyway, there you go. I'm going to go a bit of green on that so that it's not too dominant and it's got to be pushed up. I'm not going to be working detail on that tonight. It's a quick peep of time. Oh, excellent. Right. So we're going to just do a bit of correctiveness on this. Just to get where I am. Moving over, that's that. Okay, and then this comes up behind the All right. It kind of made that rock up a little bit, but never mind, it kind of works, I suppose. Should I be worried or not? I don't think anyone is going to be. It's the path, it's the... It's the rock, it's the... It's a bank. It'll look okay, so I'll... Jira's out now. Why am I going to spend a lot of time revamping that and moving stuff around so that it looks as the photo depicts? Not sure, probably not, but you never know. It's an open discussion, which I will have a while ago, a minute later, sometime tomorrow. I don't talk at all well when I'm painting, so I probably should talk less, paint more. That was cruel if anybody agreed with that, but I can't argue with you. Uh, Moving on, so yeah, that kind of is more, a bit more drama. Let's push that water up a bit, a bit of fluid, so I'm going on, I just want to make this flow over, oh hello, that's why, uh, that's splinding in actual fact, let's put a bit of grey on that, golly. It's too blinding for words. That's um, that's been that dark which it's so close to. Okay. All right. So I'm going to leave that there and come back to it another time later during the week. But I wanted to just yeah, it's better. Just seen that in the uh, screen now. Let's come back into this woody bit. So, a bit of dark, that's too dark. A um, bit of orange and yellow onto that, and that's more of the colour. So, we know where this is now. And we can now just complicate some of those. Sorry, my shoulder was probably in the way there. It was frustrating. I couldn't see what I was doing. Um, must remember my shoulder. Yeah, so that's all good. Going into this again now. Remember, as we come nearer, we go darker. Darker, darker, darker. Let's put, let's put that in. Good. So <clears throat> what I'm going to be doing next week, I'm putting more, well, for want of a better word, is actually deep breath detail into this smaller 
lighter and darker shapes and that's going to make it look jolly nice and um, more tree-esque because right now it looks a bit of a you see your face in a way um, well we know what it is but it, it just needs to be brought out not too much here um, but certainly around the near yeah, as it needs a lot of attention on that to to make it go ah it's a forest and that's kind of a nice feel when that happens so we'll make sure that does yeah so just bringing some of these darks now into this zone this is dry canvas want it to be wet canvas sorry I'm really mindful of my shoulder I must pay more attention in school I want to come over this way and do it. here we go let's see my shoulder see my see what I'm doing that will I promise to try harder <laughs> not much point showing you what I'm doing if you can't see anything right so black and brown mostly brown with a bit of green ish is making up this color a bit more green so wiggle this up so that it's it's a nice light there that's nice so we'll take off getting excited um, but it comes around look at that oh. see these things happen nice things happen when you just let go and you don't worry too much you're not kind of worried about putting a brush down you know, you're not looking at the painting going oh I don't know what to do well don't worry about that just do anything and think about what you're trying to achieve and imagine imagining imagine oh but Imagine it. There you go. <laughs> um, and you know, if, if you just relax, just focus on light and dark shapes and get those in place. Now, obviously, I'm kind of using a photo as a guide, but if you saw it, you think I well, you, you think I wasn't looking at the photo very often, which in actual fact you're quite right, I'm not. It is a guide. I don't want it to be a photo I want it to be a painting and I want it to be an emotional kind of wow painting not to oh, why didn't they use a camera and get it printed sort of painting you know um, I can paint things a camera can't do and that's what I'm trying to achieve on this one I think I don't need it to look like a photo I think sometimes yeah you do get these questions they say oh, why do you bother painting you know when you can get a camera yeah <laughs> well there's a uh, numerous answers to that question and um, one good one is that uh, I don't want to paint a painting as if it's a photo I have a camera I know what they do I'm using two currently so you don't need to uh, paint what the camera sees and what's that look like from the far so have a look at the picture on the screen yeah I'm really kind of happy with that I think it's um time is up it's just gone seven so I think we can just have a couple of more minutes and then just these few more minutes I'm going to stand back he says and I'm going to think where else I'm going to uh, why I see it is instantly I need some more darks in this zone so I kind of feel that could be a good dark area. 
Again, um, the brown and black making a lucky brown. And I think we could come up with a few more darks in this area. Um, and this really calls to me to make it a bit darker. So let's get around here. Don't go too far down there, but that's not so bad. There's a fair bit of paint on this now, which is, of course is why it's not going all hello dark. Um, but that's all okay. Right. And I think we need a, a darkened hollow. So I like this to be dark, I think. When I use the word dark, obviously I mean darker. And maybe just in this area. So I think that's probably going to be it for the night. So I think, uh, thank you for joining once again. Um, I'm a bit happier with this stage now. I've made those changes. And it's come to the end. Yeah. We're getting there. Um, I'm happy with the stage now. And so what I'll be doing during the course of the week um, is complicating this. I'm bringing this area on to more of a, ah, it's a forest, there are trees kind of stage. And then we can focus on this middle bit and bring that on and uh, then the rocks. So all good. Listen, please um, do write in with your request. Oh, hello. What have we got here? David, hello. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Um, it's uh, we've I fiddled with actually the uh, software today, so it's hopefully a little bit um, better. But no, thank you for that. And um, and yes, I'll I'll share your your uh, thoughts and uh, you know uh, your your feelings to the to the family. We've got quite a few of them around actually this week, so it's kind of nice. And uh, we lo really look forward to having you guys down again. Uh, we're going to be launching a couple more one-day workshops out in the wilderness. Um, found a few more nice places, so we're going to... Now it's sunnier, <clears throat> hopefully soon. Uh, we'll be able to take advantage of painting out in the woods and the, uh, the beach, which would be nice, because at the end of the road. Anyway, guys, thank you ever so much for listening in. Um, I look forward to seeing you next Tuesday with this hopefully a little bit more brought on for you so we can focus on a particular zone, which is what I'd like. And uh, I'll be a bit more focused this week, fingers crossed, thumbs up, etc. But um, be well, stay safe. Uh, please do um, invite everybody to uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel and like the videos and things like that because it really does help those algorithms for us. Um, we're about a quarter of the way there, so still a long way to go, but uh, it's good fun. Anyway, be safe, and I look forward to seeing you the next Tuesday. Take care. Bye for now.